is a good God. He's brought us all the way through 2021, and yet here we are now on the last Sunday of the year. He's a mighty God. He's a magnificent God. Trouble may have been all around us, but he was a fence around us too. Hallelujah. Come on, help us celebrate. For those of you online, those of you who are here in the sanctuary, come on, clap your hands. Come on, we're going to take you back. You know how I like to do it. I like those old songs that I grew up on. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, come on, come on. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. Oh, so much trouble. I have to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. That's all right. I know Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. But that's all right, right. cause I know Jesus. 
call him Jehovah. Some people call him Emmanuel. Some people call him El Shaddai. But I call you my daddy. Hey, I call you my daddy, God. Because you have been so good to me when I didn't see my way. Hey, Lord, you kept your arms around me. Lord, you kept your arms around me. Lord, you kept your arms around me. Lord, I thank you for being a man. Lord, I thank you for being my angel. Lord, it camped all around me. Lord, I thank you for being a man. Oh, protect, 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 protect my strong tower. Strong tower.
you were still good. You never gave up on me. You never gave up on me. You stepped in. You stepped in every time. You stepped in right on time. So listen, your delay is not your denial. Because it's been delayed doesn't mean you've been denied. Oh, wait on.
to you and everything I give to you say I surrender all I give you my heart, Jesus. I give you my mind. I give you my money. I give you my time. I give to you. Say I surrender all. Yeah. I surrender all to you. Everything. Withholding nothing, 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 yeah. Your declaration to God say, I surrender. I surrender to you. Everything I Withholding nothing, holding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, 
feel like the Lord's really asking for that. We're not just singing a song, but it's coming from the desire of his heart. Sometime even in a marriage, when you've been married for a long time, you renew your vows. There are times to re-up. There are times we need to recommit. There are times the course of life, busyness of life, desires for other things begin to choke that relationship out of our life. We've lost, we lose our first love. We don't have the vibrancy, the commitment. We begin to focus and think about other things. But I feel like today God's asking us to surrender afresh to him. I feel like he's asking us to make a new commitment. And some of you, it might be a commitment for the first time. Some of you may never have given your life to Christ, really given him everything. No holds barred. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Wherever you want me to live, I'll live. Whatever you want me to be, I'll be. I hold nothing back from you. You died for me on the cross. You sacrificed your life. You're worth everything. You purchased me with your blood. You own me. I will live my life for you. When you ask him to do that, he comes in, he forgives your sins, he washes them away, he fills you with the power of the Holy Spirit. But today I feel the need for a fresh commitment. I don't want to lead you as to what to say, but I do want you to say from your own heart what's in your heart to say. If you have never given your heart to Christ, what you need to say is something like, God, forgive me. I give my life to you. I give everything to you. If you have given your life to Christ, but you feel like he's saying more, he's saying more, I, I, I want more. I want you to recommit to me. Then you'll say something like, God, forgive me for whatever ways I've strayed. Have mercy on me. God, fill me with your spirit. I surrender my life to you again. I surrender my heart to you again. And I invite you, if you're able to, if you're able to, get on your knees. If you can't, that's fine. You can just be seated or stand. It doesn't matter. But that's a posture that says, God, I surrender. I give to you. And I'm going to ask the worship team to sing this song again. And I want you to talk to God in your own way. You speak to him. I'm not going to tell you what to say, but let him hear your heart. Saying, God, help me to give you more. Or I give you more. Or God, I'm tired of, of going the way I'm going. I'm tired of running away. I'm, whatever your, your prayer is, you say it to him. Recommit your life to him. Three seconds.
Receive us, Give Lord. myself away. Yeah. Receive us, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, God. Glory to God. Do you give it all to the Lord today? Not just your trials, your tribulation, your pain, your heartaches, but your gift, your talent, your time, and your money. Are you willing to give it all to God today? So we just thank God for how he's brought us down through this year. I believe this is the 53rd Sunday. When you started off early this year, we didn't know if we were going to make it. Through the COVID, through the insurrection, through pain and death and suffering, the Lord has seen fit and found favor with those who yet live. And so we want to give him the honor and the glory that do his name. It is offering time in the house. Oh, you get excited about that. You just said you was going to give it all to him. Ain't no need to stop it now. Ain't no need to stop it now. You just proclaim in front of all these witnesses that you're going to give it all to him. So let's get excited now about this part of the worship service. Giving tithes and offering is just a continuation of the worship service. You believe that if you give, it shall be given up to you. Good measures, shaken together, pressed down until your cup runneth over. You believe that you could cheer for giver that as long as you give and continue to give with a cheerful heart, that you will always have more than enough. After the light bill is paid, the water bill is paid, the gas bill is paid, the mortgage is paid, after the car note is paid, you're still going to have some left over so that you can help the poor and the needy. So we just thank you so much. There's so many different ways to give. Cash, you can use the white envelopes for cash checks, money orders. Some people still give money orders. I was at the post office the other day. And the lady was getting some money orders. Part of it was going to be toward her offering. So don't discount money orders. There's so many different ways to give. Uh, I need to see the screen here. Ways to give for those who are technologically savvy. You can uh, use your Fayhow app. That's uh, That's You can also text Fresh Anointing to 77977. And that's that old envelope that you put that stamp on, P.O. Box 241167, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. For those of you who are scre uh, streaming here live, this is the time to give. We all ought to just put a little bit extra in the offering today just to let the Lord know that you are grateful that he's brought you safely thus far, and you're counting on him to lead you on. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're so grateful. We do give it all to you today because you are the one that deserve it all. Born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Take him out of the manger today with your giving. Give with a cheerful heart. And we just thank you 
And we just, just bless your holy name, ask you to lead us and guide us into 2022. More to do in 2022. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. everyone how are you this wonderful morning are you doing well did you have a great Christmas are you glad that Jesus loves you or well, aren't you love him back for just a minute would you do that you guys look so wonderful this morning what a great worship experience we had this morning we welcome those that are watching online those that are watching by our e-church family all over the world wherever you might be and those in Atlanta we welcome you all this morning. Let's say hello to our e-church family, our online family. I'd say hello. We wave at you. God bless you. We love you guys so, so, so very much. Well, a couple of things coming up you don't want to miss. One of them is our watch night service, which is going to be on the 31st at 10 p.m. I think that's Friday, is it? At 10 p.m. And we're going to be talking about Breaking Bad. Now, uh, you don't want to enter into this new year without being in the presence of God. These are crazy times. And only, how many of you know God knows what's going to happen every 365th day, five days in 2022? And we want to be in his presence, both hearing from him and receiving the grace we need as we move into the new year. So don't miss watch night. Only one service at 10 p.m. on Friday night. Then on January 2nd, Sunday morning, January 2nd, we're going to be talking about the word of the Lord for 2022. Uh, at the beginning of the year, God has always been kind to us to reveal what he's saying to us for the new year. Uh, what's happening in the new year. We're going to have one service also January 2nd, just one service at 10 a.m., just one 10 a.m. service. So don't, don't, don't come at 9, don't come at 11. It's 10, so if you come at 9, you'll be all right. Come at 11, you'll miss a little bit. But, but it's going to be at 10 a.m., January 2nd, one service. I'll be releasing the word of the Lord for 2022. What is God saying? The Bible says God will do nothing except he first reveals it to his servants, the prophets. And we could get insight as to what's on God's heart for 2022, what he's thinking about, what he's feeling, what's on his mind, where, where's his heart, so we could kind of be aligned and in tune 
with what's on God's heart. Lastly, it's not too late for you to sponsor a child in 2021 for Destiny Christian Academy. Uh, we thank uh, the over 100 plus people who have sponsored a child so far. The academy is still going very well. Uh, they're planning a wonderful garden now uh, just to see the pictures. And I'll give you an update first of the year of many of the wonderful things that are happening. But for $495 a year, $41.25 a month, you could change the life of one person forever uh, in Sierra Leone in our school there. Go to destinychristianafrica.org. Say that with me, destinychristianafrica.org. If you go there, you'll find out how you can sponsor a child. As you sponsor one and pay for it through PayPal, you'll get a picture, an email of the child that you sponsored. You may be able to pray for them, be involved in their life perhaps until the day, uh, all the days of your life if you desire to do that. So please do that. Well, let's get into the word. Let's pray this morning. Say, Lord, speak to my heart. Let the word come alive in my heart. Speak directly to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for your word. We thank you for having been faithful throughout this year. For time and time again, you've spoken to us, spoken through us. Your word is alive. Do it again. We yield to you, Holy Spirit. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 2, we're going to read verse 1 all the way down to verse 20. Luke chapter 2, 1 through 20. And I want you to read some of this with me. I want to read some, and I'm going to ask you to read some. So pay attention with me. Ready? Let's read. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. That since this first took place while homeboy was governing in Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph went up also from where? Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into where? Are you guys following with me? All right, we're going to start back over. Go to verse number one. Verse number one. Are you ready? All right, stay with me now. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Canaris was governing Syria. Verse 3, let's read it together. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Let me read. To be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood above them, stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. Read verse 10 with me. Then the angel said to them, go ahead. Uh-huh. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Verse 11, go ahead. There is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in Armani, living, lying in a manger. Verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying what? Glory to God in the highest. On earth, peace and goodwill toward men. Verse 15, so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said one to another, what? Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. Verse 16, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Verse 17, I want you to pay special attention to this verse. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child. They made what? Widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. So they went and blabbed it everywhere. And all those things they heard, they marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Verse 19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Hmm. 
Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told them. Luke chapter 2, verse 51, talking about Mary again. Here's a, here's a story. Jesus was 12 years old. And Jesus left his family and went into the temple and began uh, communicating with Pharisees and Sadducees and ministering to them and, and doing what he was doing. So Mary and, and Joseph sought for three days to find Jesus. They couldn't find him. And finally, somebody said, he's in the temple. And she went to the temple and said, Jesus, what are you doing? Why would you do this? We sought you for three days sorrowing. And then Jesus said, why did you seek me? Did you not know I must be about my father's business or my father's house? And here's what the Bible said about Mary. Luke 2, 51. I want you to read it with me. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. Say amen to the word of God, please. Say amen again. Say amen again and again. We know Mary was chosen by God to be the mother of Jesus. But there's something the Bible re re reveals about her that has struck my mind over the last couple of weeks. And I, I want to share it with you. It's a theme that seems to be coming up over and over again. We have a contrast in this text of two different groups of people who all heard the same things and they responded in different ways. When the shepherds who were keeping watch over their flock by night saw miraculous things and heard miraculous things. They went out and they couldn't keep quiet. They told everybody what they saw. And there's some merit to that and benefit to that. But the Bible makes a commentary about Mary. And I think there's a reason it makes that commentary. Anything that's in the Word of God, you have to pay attention and ask why it's there. Why did, why did the Bible record Mary's response being different from everybody else's? The Bible said Mary just took those things and pondered them in her heart. Jesus 12, here's 12 years later. And Jesus is still acting in ways that shock people. But Mary is still pondering these things in her heart. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes about cultivating a vibrant inner life. Cultivating a vibrant inner life. The Bible says Mary pondered these things. In other words, she was contemplative. She was meditative. She, she took things inside. To be contemplative means to gaze attentively, to observe, to consider, to mark out space for observation, to act on holding an idea continuously in your mind. So why did God choose Mary above all the women on the earth? We don't really know. We won't know till we get to heaven, but we, we do see some insight into her personality or insight into the depth that she's had about her or, or the way she thought or the way she processed. And there's something about what's happening in our society that I, 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 a lot of what's happening in our world today, I love. A lot of what's happening, I like. I'm a guy who loves technology. Anybody here love technology? Any other geeks in here with me? Man, I love some toys. I love things that light up. I love sounds. I love all of that is just beautiful. It's amazing. It's, it, it's, it's, it's phenomenal to me that you could, on your television, get three, four, five, six, seven hundred, a thousand channels and watch things from all over the world. It's amazing to me that on your phones you could get almost any news source and tap into any part of what's happening in the world. Uh, the technology is blowing my mind and it's moving so fast. And I love all the gadgets and all the toys and all the things we have. But I think there's something that's being lost in our society, in our world, and that's depth. That's that's cultivating a deep inner life. That's being contemplative. That's beginning to, to grow deep on the inside because we have a lot of people today that are very shallow on the inside but make a lot of noise on the outside. Social media kind of lends itself to that. Our world kind of lends itself to that. And I hear God calling his beloved ones back to a place of death, back to a place of of contemplation back to a place of not totally, not 100%, but beginning to have a vibrant inner life. Now, Mary was different. Mary was different than many of the other people who followed Jesus. Now, we know that she was Jesus' mother, but she was different because she had different responses. For example, when the angel first appeared to Mary and said, Behold, you're going to have a child, and the child you're going to have, the Holy Spirit is coming upon you, and that thing which is going to be conceived in you is going to be by the Holy Spirit, then Mary's response was different than, than Zachariah's response. When an angel said to her, you're going to have a baby, you're not going to need to know a man, the Holy Spirit's going to plant a baby in your womb, and you're going to give birth to a baby from God, Mary's response was, 
Come on with it. Literally in the Greek, when you read it, she said, be it unto me. In other words, come on, come on, let's do it. She responded in faith. Zechariah, not too long after or before, had a vision from an angel who said, your wife's going to have a, have a child. She's been barren for a long time. She's going to have a child. And Zechariah said, mm, how do I know that you're going to do this? How do I know that it's real? The angel said, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. How dare you doubt me? And by the way, you're going to be dumb, not able to speak until the child is born. Different responses. Mary had faith. Mary was able to believe. Why? I believe it's because of this one secret of the way Mary lived. She had a contemplative. She had a, a processing life. She had a, a mindset and a heart and a personality where she was able to cultivate this degree of depth in her heart. Not only that, we see her again in John chapter 2. Jesus goes to a wedding with his family, and they run out of wine. At a wedding, wine is the festive thing you do at a wedding. It's very important to the wedding, and they run out. A great embarrassment to the bride, and they ran out. So Jesus, Jesus and Mary begin to have a conversation, and Mary just looks at the servants and says, whatever he says to you, do it. And Jesus said, woman, what are you saying? My time has not yet come. But Mary discerned something that others couldn't discern. Somebody's got to listen to me today. Mary sensed some things that others didn't sense. Mary was tapped into a source that others won't tap, weren't tapped into. And she said, whatever my son says to you, you do it. And then Jesus said, go and get the water pots. Put water in them. And we don't know what he did, whether he waved his hand, whether he just spoke a word, or whether once they obeyed, but they brought the water out and the water became wine. But not only wine, better wine than they had before. But what was going on in Mary's heart? I think Mary was tapped into a different source because Mary many times would visit a different realm. I believe she lived in a different place from the people around her. And then we see, after Jesus rose from the dead, Mary responded different. You see where the next morning, I think it was the next morning, or the third day after, after they put Jesus in the tomb, that the women went to anoint him with spices and oil to anoint his dead body. And as the Bible talks about the women that went, it doesn't ever mention Mary. In fact, in some passages it makes it clear that Mary did not go with him. So here's Jesus who died. The disciples are angry, they're frustrated, they're bummed out, they've lost faith, they believe that their Messiah is dead and he's not going to live again. All the things that Jesus was telling them, they don't remember anymore, and they're just, they're devastated. And several of the ladies go the next morning to the tomb to anoint the body of the Messiah, but Mary never goes. Why? Because I think Mary's processing, Mary's contemplative lifestyle put her in a place where she was able to add two and two together. Because she remembered at 12 years old when she lost her son for three days. Because it was three days Jesus was in that temple doing his father's business. And I think that Mary realized that this was the third day. And I think her ability to meditate and contemplate and ability to put two and two together said, no, 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 I don't need to go and anoint the dead body of somebody who's about to rise. And I think Mary, they sang the song, Mary, did you know? Oh, yeah, Mary knew. Mary knew not just because the angel told her. Mary knew because of the way she lived her life and the way she began to contemplate and the way she began to, to live. I think so. And as I read this story not too many days ago, that just jumped out at me where the Bible says Mary pondered these things in her heart. Mary began to tap these things in her heart. And I hear God saying, in the days ahead, it's going to be necessary in the midst of all the noise. In the midst of all the chatter, in the midst of all this going on in our world, to cultivate an inner life that is deep, that is vibrant, where our roots go deep, where we have some depth to us, and we're not just shallow people that make a lot of noise, but there's some real depth and real faith. We're getting ready to go into the new year, and one of your New Year's resolutions I want to be, God, I'm going to cultivate a deeper inner life. I want to grow on the inside. I want, to, I want to grow in for real, for real, not just what people think about me. We live in a day of facades. We live in a day we can put anything on social media. We want to put it, don't matter whether it's real, it just matters how many likes we get. And if we get enough likes, we start thinking it's real. But no, God wants real depth on the inside. God wants real vibrancy on the inside. God wants us to be strong on the inside, and that takes cultivating. That takes, that takes depth. That takes uh, living our life in a different way, the same way Mary did. Can I get an amen this morning? Now, there's some benefits of contemplation. 
I recently read a quote by Jean Arc who said this, Soon silence would have passed into legend. Man has turned his back on silence. Day after day, he invents machines and devices that increase noise and distract humanity from the essence of life, the essence of contemplation and the essence of meditation. That's what's happening in our world. Meister Eckhart said this, what we plant in the soil of contemplation, we shall reap in the harvest of action. There's a parable that intrigues me in the Word of God. It's a parable of ten virgins. You find it in Matthew 25. The Bible said five were wise, five were foolish. And all of them were waiting for the bridegroom. And the bridegroom delayed. And that's a picture of Jesus' return. The bridegroom delayed. He did not come on time. And they had lamps. And the lamps ran by oil. And at midnight, when the bridegroom finally came, all ten grabbed their lamps and they tried to trim them. But five had oil and five were out of oil. So the five that were out of oil went to the five that had oil and said, give us some of your oil. They said, we can't. We need to have enough oil to find our bridegroom. And the way it would happen is the bridegroom at night would walk through the streets. It's the way they got married back then. The bridegroom would walk through the streets and there would be a party of people that would yell, the bridegroom comes, the bridegroom comes. You never know when he's going to come. You don't know what hour, you don't know what day. You have to be ready. So you would grab your lamp, you would trim your lamp, you would get dressed quickly and go out to meet the bridegroom. So he said, I, if I give you my oil, I might not have enough light to go find the bridegroom. So I'm going to find the bridegroom. You go to the city and buy and come back. And by the time they came back, the door was shut. They had missed the wedding. And they weren't able to enter into the fullness of what Jesus had in store. And I wonder what that oil is. There are a lot of people that have a lot of theories about what that oil is. But one thing I know about what that oil is, it represents what's going on on the inside of us. That's one thing I know. And I, my friends, want to have enough, enough that when my bridegroom, bridegroom comes back, I'm ready. Listen to the parable. Listen to the parable. They were all brides. They were all in the kingdom. They were all saved. They were all serving him. They were brides. They were chosen. But five of them did not have enough to endure to the end. Five of them did. I don't want to be just moved by lights and sounds and colors and hype. And that's what a lot of times even church has become hype and sound and colors and lights. And there's nothing wrong with colors and lights and hype. But what's going on on the inside? And it's easy to hide behind the lights and the color and the sound and have no depth on the inside. It's easy to have a good experience where you say, I enjoyed that, but what happened to you? What happened in your heart? Were you convicted? Were you changed? Did Jesus become more real to you or did you just go have a good time? You could do that at the movies. You could do that at a rock concert. You can do that at a jazz festival. What's different about what's happening in your heart with Christ? And there's this inner reality God wants cultivated in our heart where we don't live by a facade anymore. We don't have to wear the mask anymore. And it happens all the time. It just matters what people feel about us. We go to church. We look right. We act right. We, we dress right. And people are praising us on social media. We're right. But what's happening on the inside? God, God wants this reality on the inside, this depth on the inside. And, and it's, it's gotten so bad that the things we idolize today, they, they should not be idolized. We actually idolize the idols. I remember talking to somebody recently about one of the popular movie people, very popular movie person, and they were just telling me, you know, this, this, this guy and their wife, they're so jacked up, they, they have an open marriage, and What's, what's an open marriage? They, they, you know, you can do whatever you want with whoever you want to do it with. And now this and then the children this. And they, they just went on with this long laundry list of things that were crazy about them. And my question was, why would we sit down and be entertained by somebody like that? Why? Why would we idolize that if that's so? Why don't we just get on our face and fast and pray for God to change? But why go pay money? To, to go watch a movie with somebody who's that jacked up. Why? Why do that? What's the purpose of doing that? So my point is, what we idolize these days 
is, is not what God's winking at. It's not what God cares about. It's not what Jesus loves, the many things that we idolize. And we idolize all of this stuff out here. We want to be like this person and that person and this star and that star and all that stuff. And there's merit to some of it. I'm not saying in this world we can't have a good time. We can't have great things. God makes all things richly for us to enjoy. That's not my point. We're not going into the monastery like a monk. We're not going to be a, a, a live a life of asceticism where the less we have, the better we are. That's not my point. My point is the things we idolize, the things we think are normal. We need to get back to being uh, true Christians the way Jesus lived and cultivate this inner depth within us so when Jesus comes back, we have enough oil. Listen, the Bible said when the Word of God is sown in the ground, there are three things that happen. Some falls on stony places, not enough to, en to endure. So when tribulation or persecution comes, they're offended by and by for the Word's sake. And some this and some that. But then it says, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things choke the word out. Listen to that. The cares of this world, caring about this world too much. What am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? What am I going to drink? How am I going to do this? How am I going to get the car I want? How am I going to get this I want? And living your life so much while you're striving for more and more and more, and it chokes the word of God out of your heart. Or the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, pursuing riches, that can deceive you. Now, it's nothing wrong with being rich. It's something wrong with you trusting in riches more than in Jesus. That's the only problem. And the lust of other things, desiring other things. And there are a lot of people that feel like, you know, I served God in my youth. Now it's time for me to do, oh, no, 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 sweetheart. You serve God to your last breath. You give him everything to your last breath. And those things choke the word of God out to where we become, we become so, so nimble that it doesn't, take a, it doesn't even take a strong wind to blow us over. You know the strength of a man or a woman by what they're able to endure. I was amazed during COVID when church closed down for a year, the number of people that, whose hearts begin to grow cold and who lost faith. You mean, you mean we don't have enough faith to endure a pandemic? We don't have enough faith to watch online and still stay strong? No, 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 baby, we need a vibrant inner life. We need to cultivate some depth in our heart. We need to go back to the deeper life. We need to go back to a life that has some degree of depth to it. That's what Mary did. That's what she had. And that's why when the other women went to the tomb to anoint that body, Mary said, there's no need for me going. I know I'll see my son soon. Because of the way she processed and the way she thought. So when you live a contemplative life, Number one, your faith is stronger. Your optimism is stronger by default. Number two, it increases your health. Do you know being more contemplative, being more meditative, being more internal increases your health? Increases your mood. It makes your mood more positive. It improves your concentration. It improves your immune function. Your immune function. We need that today. You have less anxiety, less depression. You age slower. Don't even need as much Maybelline. Come on now. Woo -hoo. Number three, do you know that it increases the size of your brain in the area of intelligence? Your prefrontal cortex is bigger. Long-time contemplators, listen, long-time contemplators tend to have an enlarged prefrontal cortex, our frontal cortex. That's a part of the brain responsible for intelligence, personality, sensory information, motor functions, and thought. And the smaller amygdala responsible for experiencing emotions, it actually gets smaller. So contemplative practice allows emotions such as fear, agitation, or anger to diminish. Diminish. Being contemplative, being meditative, being thoughtful, being mindful, those things cause a person to be a lot more in control, to be a lot more pleasant, to be a lot more, a lot less fearful, a lot less agitated, to age slower, to be smarter in your mind, to not be as controlled by emotions. The more contemplative that you are, that's the result of it. I think we could use a little bit more of that in our world, don't you think? Just a little bit gives you a greater experience of positive emotions. So let me just give you three things real quick. Three things. You're going to hear about this more and more. I can't get away from this thing. You're going to hear about it more and more in the new year.
But I'm going to just give you a couple of small points today I want you to think about. Let me give you three ways we can start on the journey of being contemplative. Now, here's what I'm after today. As we get ready to go into a new year, we make resolutions, our vows, our decisions as to how we're going to live differently. So some of you, come January, will renew your gym membership. We know you will. And it's going to be good through March, <laughs> April, whatever. Uh, some will buy the bicycle, buy the trip, whatever. You know, whatever we decide to do, some are going to eat healthy. You're going to throw everything out of your kitchen January 2nd. You're going to buy broccoli and Brussels sprouts and whatever. You know, we all, we make those decisions. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not making fun of that. I'm not making light of that. We should. And the best way to, best way to keep those resolutions, by the way, is to get community. Okay. Get some people doing it with you. Get some people to hold you accountable with whatever your goals are. Don't try to do it alone. That's the best way to keep them. But there's one that I want to add. There's one, and you're going to hear about it again throughout the year. There's one that I want you to add to be more thoughtful, more mindful, more contemplative, more meditative, uh, more internal about what's really happening inside your heart. Getting away from the normal aspect of this world system and going inside and going deeper in your relationship with Christ. You will not regret it if you decide to do that. And I'll show you how. I'm going to give you just a couple of tips this morning, but throughout the year, I'm going to show you how. Number one, how to be more contemplative, how to be more like Mary. Number one, are you ready? Speak less. Listen and think more. Speak less. Listen and think more. So what am I saying? Speak less. So what am I saying? Oh, I said, shut up. Those of you are like, I'm not being that overt, but speak less. Listen and think more. I read Inc. Magazine recently, and it had an article that said, seven reasons why you should not talk much. In Inc. Magazine, a business magazine, seven reasons why you should not talk much. Number one, because knowledge is power. And in the magazine, it was saying that when you're talking, you're revealing what you know, but you're not learning what the other person knows. And because knowledge is power, don't talk too much. Number two, you won't reveal anything that you later regret. Number three, you won't say anything dumb. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln said this, it's better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak out and remove all doubt. Can you hear that? That's classic, man. Let me read that again. It's better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak out and remove all doubt. What does that mean? By the time you speak, then they'll know you're a fool. That's what that means. So that was, Abraham said that. I didn't say that. Number four, you won't use up all your material. Number five, the person who's doing the talking will feel understood and cared about if you don't talk all the time. Number six, you gain inside information when you listen. Number seven, when you do speak, people will listen. If you don't believe it, ask E.F. Hutton. So here's what the Bible says about speaking less. James 1.19. If it's on the screen, say amen. I want you to read it with me. James 1.19. Is it up there? All right, ready? Let's read. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Let's read it again. So then, my beloved who? Brethren, people who are born again, let every man and woman be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Proverbs 10, 19. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but he who restrains his lips is wise. In the multitude of words, sin is going to find its way in there somewhere. Proverbs 18, 2. Are you read it? Ready? Read. He who guards his mouth preserves his life. Stop right there. Who's going to argue with me now? He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. You ever said, in it, said something that you wish you never said? Hey, everybody has. The Bible has wisdom on that. James 1, 26, if, any, if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, that one's religion is useless. This is the Bible. Matthew 12, 36, but I say unto you that every idle word that men speak 
They will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So listen, in social settings, in social settings, let me help the introverts out a little bit. Let me help those that are quiet out a little bit. You're okay. You might need to learn to speak up when it when it's called for. So I'm not saying that, but there's some merit. In fact, 1 Peter 3, 4 talks about woman having the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. 1 Peter 3, 4, it calls the, a meek and quiet spirit an ornament. An ornament. It's decoration. It, it's, it's jewelry. It's the gold necklace. It's the bracelet. It's, it's, the, it's the eyelashes that go out three inches. It, it's the ornament. It, it's the ornament. Listen, so God says, I'm, I'm okay with the, the outward. I'm okay with that. When you look at that verse, it's not shunning the outward. It's saying, if you, all you do is decorate the outward and don't do anything with the inward, that's where the problem is. So as well as the outward, put on the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. God values it greatly. And I'm going to assume you're being quiet because I'm speaking of being quiet. So, it's okay not to respond to everything that's posted on social media. It's okay not to call into every radio show. It's okay to speak when you have something to say. When you don't have anything to say, it's not to speak. It's okay. It's okay to listen and learn. It's okay to go to a counseling session and listen to what the person has to say and not show off all your knowledge. It's okay when somebody loses a loved one to be there and just be there without trying to figure out what to say because most of the things that are said don't help. I know how you feel. They don't want to hear that. Well, they're in a better place. They know that. Sometimes just be there. Hug them and just sit. Hold their hand and just sit. Need anything, I'm here. You don't always have to talk. If you're married, your spouse does something you don't like, you don't always have to talk. You don't have to say something about everything you don't like. There's wisdom in holding it in to the right time or just letting it go. Because some of the things that married people argue about don't deserve the time of arguing. Don't deserve the emotions. Don't deserve that. And the one thing you ought to learn about being married, the longer you get married, some things, it just ain't nobody got time for that. Some things, it's just not worth going there. So younger people learn from some that have been married for a long time. Some things you just don't argue about. So he didn't wash the car. It's okay. Get in the dirty car and drive it. Or, or, or go in the car, wash yourself. Either one. Seriously. She didn't cook dinner. DoorDash is there. I'm not saying she shouldn't cook. I'm not saying he shouldn't wash the car. My point is the things we argue about, and then you end up going to sleep in another room hungry and in another room. And then it goes on for three, four, five days because somebody's proud and doesn't want to say, I'm sorry. It's just not worth it. So, so, so our society seems to value talk. I remember when talk shows first came about, and there were some things I liked about them and some things I did not like about them. And what I did not like about it is that it's a lot of talk, but a lot of problems are not being solved. It's just a lot of opinions flying out. And everybody gets a chance to release their opinion. And everybody gets a chance. But, but I'm like, but we ain't changed nothing. We just spent an hour, and my life's not better, your life's not better, nothing changed. But everybody just got to express their opinion. And I remember that world, and, and it's gotten to a bigger point now. My only point to you is do not feel the pressure that you always have to speak. Because the Bible puts value on silence. I do give you permission to say amen now. <laughs> speak less. Make one of the things you decide to do for 20. And some of you may need to learn to speak more. This might not be for everybody. Some of you might be so quiet that God wants you to speak up when the time comes. Because fear is not the reason why you want to speak less. Oh, no, you're in total control. In fact, it's called meekness. And meekness is power under control. That's what meekness is. It's when you have power, but you control it. Jesus was like that. Jesus didn't speak when folks wanted him to speak. He spoke when he had something to say. Standing before Pilate, he said nothing. Many times he was tried, he said nothing. Many times people talked about him, no red letters. Jesus learned to be quiet because he was working on cultivating an inner life. Man, I love this. I can talk about this forever. Number two. 
Number two, the second thing to do to become more contemplative is slow your roll. <laughs> slow your roll. Slow down a little bit. Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. I am gentle and lowly in heart. You'll find rest under your soul. My yoke is easy. My burden is what? Jesus said, come to me and you'll find rest under your souls. Come to me with your stress, your burdens, your anxiety, your pressures. Come to me and you'll find rest under your soul. In other words, the, the hectic life we live, the pace, the, the, the stress, it's not God. I've been talking about it. Can't get away from it. It's not God. It's not God. So slow your roll. The Mary and Martha syndrome, Luke chapter 10, how Mary and Martha exhibited two different types of reality. Martha was, not that she was in the kitchen serving, she was in the kitchen serving with anxiety and stress. Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet hearing his words. And she came and reported her sister to Jesus. Jesus, make my sister come and help me. And Jesus said, Mary has chosen a good part. I'm not going to take it away from her. No, I'm not. This contemplative life that Mary had chosen, this sitting at my feet, listening to my words, this taking what I have to say in is valuable. Jesus said, I'm not going to tell Mary to stop doing that. So somebody's got to cook. How do you do that? How do you resolve that? Well, there are many ways you resolve it. I'm going to be talking about it over the year. But God wants us, listen, can you cook and be contemplative? Can you drive and be contemplative? Can you walk and be contemplative? Yes. It's something God's wanting us to cultivate about our inner reality, and it's very, very important to him. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 says, to everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under heaven. Isaiah 30, 15 says, for thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved, and quietness and confidence shall be your strength but you would not. That's a powerful verse that says in quietness and confidence there's strength. They're returning and rest there's salvation. We're going to embrace it this year. Last, learn to meditate. Meditate on God. Meditate on God. Meditate on His Word. Meditate on truth. Now, I'm not that good at all this yet. I'm, I'm, I'm starting a new journey even myself of going deeper and wanting to be more contemplative. But, but I've learned something that makes me have more joy. And I'll just pass it on to you. And I only do it a little bit. I'm not that good at it. I'm really trying to learn to do it. But I, I, try, to, I try to look at life through the lens of God and communicate with him about it. So went, went out to walk in the driveway uh, the other night. I think it was a night or so ago. Went out to walk in the driveway. And just walked by the mailbox. Turned around and come back and just noticed the, the colors in the sky. So night was coming, but in the west where the sun sets, you still saw a little bit of sunlight. And then there was the horizon, and it was three beautiful colors in the sky. So instead of just admiring the beauty, I wanted to go deeper in that, and I start talking to God. I said, God, you did that for us, didn't you? You painted that sky for us in our glory. And then I started asking him questions and thinking and, and just going a little bit deeper and meditating. When I eat fruit, an avocado, and I look at it, I, I, I want to start asking God questions. Why'd you make this pit so big? <laughs> what is the purpose of this hard thing in the middle? Do you, do you understand? Very, very minor differences, but what it does is it takes you into a place. You know, most of the scriptures in the Bible we get are there because of the disciples asking Jesus questions. Lord, when shall these things be? What is the sign of your coming, the end of the world? He gives in Matthew 24, 25. Lord, teach us to pray. We get the Lord's Prayer. They asked questions and he gave answers. The answers he gave to those questions begin to form much of Scripture. So, begin to meditate more. Psalm 1, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. His delight is in the law of the Lord. In that law he meditates, how often? Day and night. He'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. To bring forth his fruit in season, his leaf will not wither. Whatever he does shall prosper. Day and night. So meditate on God, meditate on his word, and meditate on truth. Philippians 4, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, lovely, if there be any virtue, any praise, think on these things. So pick a time every day to get quiet, to focus, to turn thoughts over in your mind, to breathe deep, uh, to, to listen to your breath if that helps you. Focus on Jesus. Um, Bring your mind back if your mind begins to wander. Slowing down, being contemplative, contemplative, 
creating some depth in your life, in your personality, in your spirit will definitely benefit your health, your mind, your mood, your personality, your relationships, your marriage. Every aspect of your life will be changed as a result of becoming more contemplative and more internal. So this year, why don't you make a point of being a little bit more like Mary, a little bit less like, a little bit more like Mary. <laughs> Would you stand where you are? I want to pray over you this morning. I'm curious. Uh, I want you to be thoughtful if, if, as you say this. And I'm wondering if God's dealing with me quite a bit or if this is something he's speaking to a lot more people. But I, I can't, when I read things, when I listen to things, it's like this theme is everywhere. It's all over the place. Uh, have any of you, has the Lord been personally dealing with any of you about uh, more quiet time, being more meditative, more contemplative. So I just want to see, raise your hand. If so, I'm just measuring. Okay, God's speaking to a lot of people about that. Very good. Let's pray together. I believe that God can give us an anointing and a grace and an authority to live in a different way. And I believe we must. If you came with somebody and you're part of the same household, I want you to hold hands right now. Don't hold hands if you don't mind uh, among different households, but hold hands. Uh, if you're with somebody of the same household, and if you want a point of contact, if they don't mind, you can put your hand on somebody's shoulder, whatever. But I want us to pray one for another. Even if you're not holding hands, somebody standing next to you, I want you to pray for them. Let's pray one for another right now. I want you to pray that God would give us the grace to go deeper this year. The grace to go deeper. The grace to be more, more like Mary. I want you to pray right now. Those of you online, I'm praying for you. That God would give you the grace to go deeper. The grace to be more contemplative, the grace to be more meditative, the grace to be more quiet, the grace to cultivate depth, the grace to read more, the grace to study more, the grace to turn off noise and just think and meditate and stew and turn over things so that our inner life can become strong. I decree that over your life. I decree that over the life of everyone who's here. Grace, grace, grace. God, give us grace. Give us grace to go deeper, grace to be quiet, grace, God, to, uh, to grow on the inside, to grow in our inner man. Give us grace. Give us grace. But I want you to pray for yourself, that God would show you the areas of distraction in your life, the areas of distraction where noise needs to be shut off in activities or things that you're doing that don't add to you, that subtract from you, that take away, that God would show you those things. He would show you what they are, show you where they are, show you those areas and begin to change those areas in your life. Come on, pray. Pray, God, show us. Show us those areas, Lord. Show us those areas. Show us those areas. Show us, God, areas we need to change. Areas we need to grow. Areas we need to do better. Yes. Areas, God, where our might, our life, our mind yes. needs to begin to conform yes. to this depth, this greater yes. inner life, God, yes. so we're not yes. caught up in yes. the world and caught up in the world system in every Grace. way. God, so that Grace. that's not our reality. Father, Grace. Grace, Lord. Come on, pray. take us deeper. Take, take us, us deeper. deeper. Deeper, Lord. Take us deeper. Deeper, Lord. deeper Lord. Take us deeper. Deeper, Lord. There's some deeper, things you want to reveal to us. Deeper, We're running Lord. too fast. We deeper, can't get the revelation. Deeper. deeper oh, deeper, God, deeper take work, us deeper. Lord. Deeper Yay. life with you, Lord. Deeper walk, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, take us deeper, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Shut off all the noise, Lord, the distraction of the devil, the distraction of the flesh, of the things that don't profit, Lord. Deliver us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bring us back to our first love. Bring us back to a place of intimacy, a place of Oh, my God, sitting at your feet and dining at your table. Oh, God, and hey. gazing at you, Lord. Gazing at your beauty. In the name of Jesus. All the things we used to do that we uh. so lost.
Bring us back to a place of love and intimacy and affection. Yes. In the name of Jesus, restore what has been lost to oh God. Restore, come on, ask the oh Lord to restore God. your first oh love. Ask him oh. to restore your first love, your intimacy in the place where you run after him. Like the Shunammite, you couldn't get enough of him. You couldn't get enough of gazing at his beauty. But now your hour of our gazing is on the television. Oh God, deliver us. Deliver us. Bring us back to that place where we hungered for you, where we run after you, where we desire nothing but you. Bring us back to that place. Renew a fresh anointing within us. Renew a desire and a passion. Renew, Lord. Oh, my God. All we did was con contemplate. All we did was stay at your feet. All we did was hunger and cry after you. All we did, like the deer, our heart panted for you. Bring us back, oh Lord. Come on, if you want God bringing you back, lift up your hand. We sang, we surrender all earlier. Come on, say, Lord, I surrender. Lord, we surrender. Lord, we surrender. Lord, we surrender, Lord. Bring us back to that place. Bring us back to that place. Crucify the flesh. And, and let our spirit begin to leap for you again. Let our soul begin to hunger after you again. Let our spirit begin to leap in the inside of us. Remove the backslide and the shallowness, Lord. We thank you this morning. We give you glory this morning. We give you praise. What you started with us, what you started with us, you will also finish. You're raising men and women with a hunger and a desire. You're raising lovers. Some of us have become professional Christians. We used to be lovers. Bring us back, Lord. Bring us back. Bring us back. Bring us back. Bring us back. You know that song as the deer pants after the... Can we sing that? Who can lead us as the deer pants... As a dear pant, as a dear pant, oh Lord, as a dear pant. Panted for the water so my soul, my soul, longeth out, my soul, after thee. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee. As the deer, deer. panteth for As deer. the water so much. So long is that 
Sing it if you know it. Desire and I long to worship you. And longing in our soul. For you alone are my strength, my shield. For you. Makes my speech ready for you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee. Lord, we long to worship you in truth and, and in holiness. In truth and in holiness. In truth, Lord. And I long. We long, Lord. To create a longing. Create a longing within us. Create a longing. Come on, say, Lord, create a longing. Create a longing. Create a longing. Create a desire. Unquenchable longing within us, oh Lord. We worship you this morning. We give you glory. We give you praise. If you are here watching and you have not given your life to the Lord, this is the time to do it. This is the time to say, Lord, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Come on, say, Lord, I repent. Lord, I repent. Lord, I repent. Lord, I repent. Come into my heart. If you are here and you want more of God, you also say, Lord, more. Lord, more. Lord, more. Come on, Lord, more. Lord, more, Lord. More, Lord. More of you. More of you. Less of me, Lord, a more of you this morning. More, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Father. We bless you. We thank you. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you go home. Observe the rules as you're going out, but let's stay in the presence, let's remain contemplative even as we go. Let's remain, let's take this grace and this anointing home with us that we may infect somebody. Desire.